want to talk today about the still life and how important it is to draw from real life observation. When you do this, it helps you create your visual library. And a visual library is what happens when you draw often and frequently, maybe the same objects over and over again, you start being able to draw them from memory. And, you know, as you grow as an artist, this is important. So, that said, we're going to talk about the still life today. So the first thing you're going to do is gather some objects, objects that maybe mean something to you, but you also want to consider their simplicity. So for instance, this is a really interesting object. I would love to draw that. And as a seasoned artist, it would probably not be that much of a challenge. But for a beginning artist, this would be a big challenge. There are a lot of nooks and crannies in this object a lot of textures with this object. So I would suggest finding something a lot simpler. So going to the store and getting some toy animals would be a fun thing to do if you don't have anything. Um, shoes, go in your closet and make a pile of shoes. That might be a fairly simple, interesting object to draw. I went to a craft store and just got a whole bunch of these little doohickeys. I don't even know what you call them, but they're doohickeys, right? And I can make a pile of these very easily and have a really cool little still life. So again, whatever you choose, choose something that is simple, but yet fun and interesting for you. My next challenge is going to be arranging these still life items so that they look interesting and fun for the viewer to look at and also interesting and fun for you to draw, right? And at present, all of my objects seem to be on about the same, they are where they are on the same plane, right? And their height is about the same. So when you're choosing your still life materials, if you can find something that's a little taller to add in there, that's perfect. But if that doesn't happen and you have objects like I have here, then setting them on different planes as you set it up will also make a huge difference. So I have boxes here that are kind of flat and they work fairly nicely. Oh dear. So I can have them like stair stepped, right? And I would want to drape them so that the box themselves is not really part of the still life. And then when I put my objects then on top and around, they become a little bit more interesting as I play around with things, right? Okay. The other thing, if you don't have the boxes, that are flat enough, because most of us have, you know, boxes that are probably a lot thicker than this. I'm going to set those aside for a second so I can show you this. Oops, I went away. Woo! I have books. Yes, don't judge. This dates me right. <laughs> Nancy Drew at her best. But they are just the right thickness. And I can stack these books, and I can even make them part of the still life. Or I can cover them with my cloth. And so then I have different planes that will make my still life more interesting. I'm building this backwards, so I really don't know what this looks like. It's so much fun, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few pictures that you can kind of look at and get an idea. And then we'll talk about what happens next, now that you have it set up. set up a still life that I think is going to work very nicely. It's got three levels of planes for them to be sitting upon, which will make it more interesting. 
and it gives me some options. I can draw it landscape style or I can draw it portrait style and still have enough information to, again, make it interesting. Now, something I have done consciously as I set this up. This is about composition. I have tried to turn all of my objects in toward, you know, the center. In other words, this house is pointing this way. I didn't turn it away like so. Because what happens if I draw this house like this is that this interesting area here will end up taking me off the picture plane. I don't want that. I want folks to stay in my picture plane. Right? So, I have the two animals are pointed this direction. The houses are pointed this direction. So, their line of sight keeps you within that picture plane. That is an important um, aspect. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to get started is we're going to draw thumbnail sketches. If you don't know what these are, they're just really small sketches that will give us an idea if the composition is going to work for us or perhaps what it is that we want to draw within this. Because the beauty of you being the artist is that you get to choose what to draw and what not to draw. You have this set up, maybe you only want to draw this section right here and blow up into it. Or maybe you don't want to draw this piece right here at all, but you've already set it up and you've already taken a photograph that you're working from, then as an artist you can just delete it. It doesn't have to happen, right? So these are choices that you make as the artist. Voila. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a viewfinder. This will help us zoom in on the aspects of this still life that we think are most interesting. Now, if you're old school and you have slide, old slides, you can pop the picture out, the little film piece out, and this makes a great window that you can hold up to your eye and you see everything and pull away from your eye and you see um, a kind of a close-up of what is happening. I don't know if this will work or not, but we'll try it and see. And you can kind of see how that changes what happens. I can also change it like so, right? Now let's say you don't have a slide container. Take an index card, fold it in half, and cut yourself a small window. You want it to be a rectangular window, so you may have to kind of measure it a little bit, but it works just fine, right? Or, let's say you don't have any of those objects at home. My favorite. Hold your hand like this. Hold your other hand like this. Now I want you to turn your right hand and put them together and you have that window. Pull it away from you, pull it towards you. How cool is that? All right, we're going to do thumbnail sketches for this still life. So the first thing I want you to do is take your sheet of paper. You can use just regular Xerox paper. And I want you to fold it in half. Hamburger. Right. And fold it in half again. This is going to give you four areas that you can use to draw in. Perfect. Wow. All right, let's get started, shall we? Before we get started, you need to understand what negative space is. You have your positive space, which are your objects, and the space around that would be your negative space. And it's important that this space has a shape that's just as interesting as that of your positive space. So to get started, we're going to, first of all, pinpoint what we want to be our focal point. 
and we'll draw that first. We'll draw it very loosely because this is a thumbnail. We're not trying to go for something realistic. We're just trying to get to the basic idea of that still life, okay? Um, you can also think about the negative space when we're doing this. We want to zoom into the still life. We want to break that negative space up. And what that means is that we want as little of it as possible uh, because that's going to make us focus in on the main aspects of the still life and make it more interesting. If you end up drawing something in the center of the paper and there's all this paper around it, you've wasted a lot of paper. That's another reason as well. So again, keep it loose and keep it simple and just enjoy. So when you get done with your first um, thumbnail, you might want to assess what you've done so that you can plan differently for the next one. With this one, I noticed right off the bat that my focal point is way too centered, and that's going to be boring. So, and I might make notes for myself as well so that I'll remember that. So, with the second one, I'm going to want to probably experiment with it being maybe landscape and see if I like that better. With this next thumbnail, I want to really think about where this focal point is going to go. I'll go ahead and get started, but really what you might try considering is actually drawing in your rule of third lines. If you do that ahead of time, then you can ensure that your thumbnail is exactly where you think it might ought to be. All right, and that will help in the long run. 